guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody all right so i welcome one and all to this class tonight and we have yet another case discussion and it's a very um, important topic a very confusing topic a very uh, volatile topic as i would say uh, hiv in pregnancy and more so important is because you do not get to see a lot of these cases but you have such specific viva questions in this that i want you all to be prepared for it so by just attending this class tonight at least you will get to know the gist of the kind of questions that will be asked you in your viva so i have a girl who has been very graciously you know volunteered for this difficult topic and i welcome her and everybody in tonight's session let's start the uh, class on hiv in pregnancy all right over to you okay okay ma'am i'm starting yeah. uh, mrs xyz 27 years female resident of kolaba gravida 3 para 1 living one abortion one with full term gestation with previous vaginal delivery with retroviral disease positive status registered and immunized at kama hospital mumbai came to opd with complaints of pain in abdomen since one day with no history of bleeding or leaking pv no history of reduced or decreased fetal movement no history of any epigastric pain altered sensorium blurring or vision headache or vomiting no history of cough fever or cold no history of any recent travel trauma or coitus a uh, menstrual history according to her lmp she is 36 weeks 5 days by Uh, uh, is her gestational age and her previous cycles were regular obstetric history she is gravida 3 para 1 living one abortion one and married since 5 years with uh, with a living uh, in her first uh, pregnancy she is having a living female 4 years old girl child by a uh, full term vaginal delivery at a village hospital with weight of 2. Uh, 2.8 kgs and her uh, like uh, in her second uh, like one and a five one and a half years back she had a spontaneous abortion at around 1.5 months of gestation for which check ureters was not done and uh, current pregnancy uh, is a spontaneous conception she is registered okay. and okay. immunized at count ma'am Okay, I'll just uh, interrupt you here, Beta. I just want to know what was her previous pregnancy status? Was was she uh, positive at that time or not? No, previous pregnancy. Uh, she is unable to uh, give uh, like as for the patient. She had uh, registered at some village hospital, and she okay. has no document, and she was no uh, not uh, diagnosed with uh, HIV at that pregnancy, ma'am. Yeah, but uh, because uh, HIV screening is a universal screening, so I don't expect that if she was uh, delivered anywhere else, they did not get her uh, HIV status checked. So I'm pretty sure that HIV uh, status was checked in her previous pregnancy, and we are presuming it to be negative, correct? Yes, ma'am. So she but was not positive, and that pregnancy was any document, ma'am, and she herself doesn't know uh, clearly whether it was done or not. All right. And what was how long back was that pregnancy? What did you say? How how uh, big, big is the baby? Four years back. Four years back. All right. And uh, the time when she had a miscarriage also that time also her HIV status was not. Yeah, We do not yeah. know anything about. It. Yeah. Okay. Because the check to touch was done. Yeah. Not done. And uh, she. Not done. She okay. It was a spontaneous. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, history of right. current pregnancy. Uh, she conceived spon. Uh, first time, Mister. She conceived spontaneously, and pregnancy was diagnosed by home UP, uh, urine pregnancy kit after she missed her menses, which was confirmed by a viability scan. Then ANC registration was done at Kama Hospital. Tablet folic acid was started. HIV was detected in the current pregnancy in the first trimester as a part of routine screening. Okay. At the point. HIV status of the husband was not known, but later on it was also advised after the pa patient came positive and husband was screened to be positive. The patient oh, was linked to the ART center at JJ Hospital for ART initiation. Initiation, okay. All right. Now here I'd like to just yeah. okay, okay. I understand that she was started on ART. I would like to know the present guidelines for uh, ART in pregnancy. What do they say? 
Uh, as per the NACO guideline and WHO guideline, uh, as mm-hmm. soon as the patient is tested or screen positive, she should be started mm-hmm. on the ART irrespective of the clinical stage or the CD4 count of the patient and it should be continued lifelong. All right. And what is the reason? Suppose she's having a very good control or she's having a very negligible amount of uh, viral load and her CD4 cell count is also pretty good. Like, for example, she was already taking ART. All right. She was taking ART before. Do you have to decrease the drug uh, dosage in pregnancy? Can you discontinue in pregnancy? And if no, not, ma'am. why? What is the reason? No, she, uh, uh, the main aim, apart from the viral control, the main aim is uh, like mother, we have to avoid the tra- mother, vertical transmission that is absolutely mother to child. So that uh, is the with regard to that, we have to continue uh, ART throughout the pregnancy, even if the patient is clinically uh, sound and her uh, viral load and CD5, uh, CD4 counts are within the normal limit. Absolutely. So it's basically to decrease the vertical transmission uh, between the mother to the child. And that is the reason why. And can you please, uh, over here, we'll just discuss something. Suppose she is not taking ARV and she does not want to take ARV. How will you counsel the patient? Ma'am, uh, first of all, uh, uh, as per the latest guideline, it is not just the patient, but the uh, uh, husband as well as the other family members should be included in the counseling and treatment part of the uh, treatment part during the pregnancy. So I will uh, like to counsel the patient again and again and like to emphasize like how um, uh, ART, uh, like uh, sticking to the ART regimen, help to uh, like minimize the transmission rate almost uh, to a rate of 2%. If ART Less than 1%, we say. Less. Absolutely. Yeah. This is what I wanted to emphasize over here because this is what your examiners would want to hear. See, this is, uh, like I said, when, when I, we were preparing for this case also, uh, there are uh, this uh, British guidelines associated with um, uh, for HIV transmission in pregnancy, which you have. <clears throat> which it very clearly state percentage wise how much the percentage decreases uh, if you're taking a regular uh, retroviral drugs uh, in the pregnancy how much the percentage decreases it decreases from 35 to 45 percent to less than one percent if you're taking rigorous antiretroviral drugs okay this is what the examiners would want to hear from you if suppose you are uh, you know unlucky enough to get this hiv case in your exams uh, this is what they want to hear that the drugs are so important and so potent drugs now we have that if the patient is taking these properly religiously it can decrease the vertical transmission rate to less than one percent guys this is a very huge figure from 35 to 45 percent it can decrease to less than one percent we'll talk about breastfeeding later on but this is very important in counseling the patient which is why i'm taking it while you're taking giving the history to me okay i would love to <clears throat> interrupt in between your history and talk to you why because all these are management points okay Rather than asking asking all of them towards the end, this is how we'll discuss the case. So suppose the patient is very well controlled. She was already taking antiretroviral drugs. Would she continue in pregnancy? Yes, she would. The reason is that it decreases the vertical transmission to less than 1%. And here in our case, as it is also, she's having a husband who is HIV positive. So there's no sense in, you know, decreasing it right now. Because obviously she will be having, uh, you know, the sexual encounters, sexual intercourse in between as well. And that will, again, keep her, you know, at, at a very high risk of contracting it, increasing the, inf- uh, you know, infection at any point in time. So because of that, you will continue her drugs all throughout her pregnancy. And later on also, as we're going to discuss. All right. 